Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have a very exciting romance recommendation video. These are romance books where somebody in the couple has never been kissed before. I really love these romances because um, they were one of my favorite things to read about in high school. I was a very slow goer in the kissing department. <laughs> I didn't have my first kiss until I was 18 and that's the only kiss I've ever had since, not gonna lie. So I was total catnip for these books because I wanted to read about somebody having their first kiss. And so I love these so much and I hope that y'all do too. Some of them in here is where the heroine has not had her first kiss, but then some of them is where the hero has not been kissed before. So we have a wide range of options for you. There's also contemporary, historical, fantasy, sci-fi alien ones in here. I did the gambit, okay? When it comes to contemporary romances, one that I'd love to start out with is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. This is one where the hero has never been kissed before. This romance is between two characters who have gone through a lot of trauma in their lives. Our heroine in here has gone through some really rough things in her past and she's going through some things currently. She is a dancer at a club and the hero in here is actually the survivor of a childhood kidnapping and assault, sexual assault of this man. He was living in this man's basement, taken from his home for years and he escaped but he was brutally assaulted by this man almost every single day. And he's really wanting to get back into life, basically. And he's really wanting to get out there when it comes to the dating world. And so he goes up to our heroine at this club and is like, hey, I will pay you to help me be more comfortable around people like touching me, not just intimately, even just like putting your hand on my shoulder, holding hands, being close in vicinity with somebody. Like I just need to get used to human contact again without thinking about that grotesque man who who hurt me as a kid. Who opened the door? Savannah did. <laughs> Hello. He basically wants to get used to human contact again. So he does not think about that grotesque, horrible man who assaulted him as a child constantly. Um, hello, are you, are you screaming for me? We have a screamer here. Look, here's Savannah screaming for us. Hey girl, hey, what's up? <laughs> anyway, this book is very, very emotional. So please take with that what you will. There are a bunch of trigger warnings in here, which are assault, sexual assault, there's a pedophile, obviously kidnapping, loss of a loved one. This couple goes through a lot, but this hero has still never been kissed. And so that's a part of this book. She is Miss Chatty Cathy, dang. What's up, girl? Anyway, um, <laughs> this book, I really liked it and really recommend it, but it's very emotional. So please watch out. I next have a Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is Stay With Me. This is the third book in her Wait For You series. This is her like new and old college romance series. This is the romance between Kala and Jax. Kala is 21 and she has not done a lot of things in her life. She's never been kissed, never seen the ocean, and never even gone to an amusement park. She has a lot of childhood trauma, so she's gone through some pretty rough things. She also has a physical like scar on her face um, and she's very self-conscious about it um, because of something that happened in her past with that. She has a horrible relationship with her mother, Mona. Her mother ends up stealing her college fund. Kala is not happy about this. It goes to the town to confront her, her small town to confront her mom. Cannot find her at the bar that her mom is supposed to be working at. Instead, she comes across Jax. Jax is the owner of the bar and he ends up graciously hiring Kala to work at the bar to earn some money while also helping her trying to find her mother, Mona. There's a bunch of other things going on here too, but that is the gist of it. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to spoil it for you, but I really like this one. This is one of my favorites in this series. Next is a novella. This is Haven by Darcy Rose. This is a step sibling romance. The two characters in here are Eve and Dean. Dean is quite older than Eve. There's an age gap in there. Um, and I believe his mother married her father when she was quite young and he was way older than her. Eve has been having a unrequited crush on Dean for quite a few years now. It's her 18th birthday at the start of this book. And Dean finally realizes that Eve is not a little girl anymore and things go from there. Eve has kind of saved herself for Dean specifically. She's always wanted to be with Dean. She saved everything for him. So yeah, <laughs> this was really hot and fun. I do wish it was full length, but if you're just wanting a short little 
steamy forbidden uh, novella to dive into, this is definitely one you should pick up. For fantasy romance, I have A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. This is one of my favorite fantasy romances ever. This is a romance between Yven and Matic. This is a huge enemies to lovers, marriage of convenience romance that I just adore. So many other people do as well. So Matic in here is a barbarian warrior leader and his parents were just murdered and he is pissed. He's trying to find out who killed his family. And there's like a rumor going around that uh, Yven, the daughter to this king, like schemed her way to do it. And he's like, oh my gosh, no, I'm going to go track down this woman and kill her myself. But Yven ends up finding him instead, okay? Ends up seeking him out and is like, hey, don't kill me yet. I did not kill your family, my dad did. And you know what? We can get back at him by you marrying me and then we take over his kingdom. And Matic is very reluctant to do this because he is not believing her when she says that she had nothing to do with his parents' deaths. He's like, you know what? Her plan is not like bad in whatever means. Like it's good, it's a good plan. So I'll, I'll go with it, I'll go with it, but I won't necessarily believe her. Um, Yven has been abused her whole life by her father, has been basically kept in a tower for years. She was also, I believe, pushed down a set of stairs. She now has a permanent leg injury and walks with a limp and scars all over her legs. And she's a very short in stature, tiny woman. And you wouldn't think on the outside that she is this authoritative queen, but she totally is. She totally is. And she shows Matic just that. It is so phenomenal. Um, but because the event has been like put in this tower all of her life by her father, she's never been in a relationship with a man, never been kissed by anybody before. And so she is ready to do ready to do just that with him. I have a few historicals for you. First is In Bed with the Highlander by Maya Banks. This is the first book in her McCabe trilogy. This is the romance between Marion and Ewan. So Marion is actually the inheritor, inheritor of this very, very large land in Scotland. Like men have been fighting over this piece of land for years and they know that Marion is the person going to inherit it. And so this evil man ends up kidnapping her and while they're trekking back to his land, um, they end up across a little boy lost and they end up taking him with them. And Marion has taken it upon herself to protect this little boy to make sure nothing happens to him. This little boy is like, my dad's name is Ewan McCabe. He will protect you if we get to his land. Let, is, let, let, let's escape, let's do it. And so she does just that. She escapes with this little boy to his father's land and Ewan ends up like thanking her, but then realizing who this woman is. And I was like, you're getting married to me. So no one will come after you anymore, but also because I want your land too. <laughs> he doesn't have the best intentions at first, but then he falls in love with her. Um, Marion is quite innocent and she's never kissed anybody before. And Ewan kind of shows her the ropes in that department. It's not the best at first. That whole scene where they're together for the first time is not my favorite thing at all. So please be aware of that. But the rest of it, the rest of it is pretty sweet. Next is The Scandalous Dissolute No Good Mr. Right by Tessa Dare. This is a short standalone novella that I just really enjoyed. This is the romance between Eliza and Mr. Harry Wright. Eliza has not been out into society yet and allowed to marry anybody because she has three older sisters and she's not allowed to get married until those sisters get married. So this novella kind of like takes place in chunks in like year time where Harry and Eliza end up bumping into each other. The first time that they meet, Harry is utterly besotted by her and wants her so badly. But Eliza is very reluctant to get to know Harry because he is known in society as a very large rake, which is kind of like a playboy back in the day. But those might just be rumors and we might have a very innocent hero on our hands. <laughs> I love those kinds of heroes, so I really enjoyed this novella. This couple was great and their banter was flippin' fantastic. Another historical that I have is A Nun for the Viking Warrior by Lucy Morris. I loved this one so much. So this is an opposites attract romance between Amy and Jurand. Amy is literally like days away from saying her vows to become a nun, but uh, she is taken from the nunnery by a Viking warrior named Jurand. Jurand comes to her and is like, hey, your dad um, made an agreement with me and we're getting married 
and I will take over the land that you were to inherit. But Amy has been through a lot with men. Her father was abusive when she was a child and she has vowed never to be under the thumb of a man ever again. So she's finding it very difficult to trust and get to know Jurand. But they do end up getting married and having to deal with marriage, being strangers and being kind of awkward at first, but they end up falling for each other and it is so sweet. The first kiss scene in here was so swoony. It's when he comes to like take her from the nunnery and he's like, have you ever kissed anybody before? And she's like, no. And he kind of like shows her how to kiss and it is swoony. I love that scene. I just love these characters so much and more people need to read Lucy Morris because she is an amazing historical romance author. Then I have um an alien romance. <laughs> this is ensnared by Tiffany Roberts. This is the exclusive edition. I I love it. This is an alien romance where the alien creature is a spider creature. This is the romance between Katan, who is this spider alien creature, and Ivy, who is a human woman. So Katan lives on his alien planet that is filled with alien humanoid creatures. And he's exploring the jungle and he comes across an abandoned spaceship and a bunch of humans in cryo sleep. He ends up accidentally waking up Ivy and taking her back to his nest. He at first thinks Ivy's like this pet, but then he realizes that she is a like sentient person and he is falling in love with her. There's a language barrier at first, but then they learn to communicate with each other. And I don't wanna say anything else cause it's gonna be a spoiler, but I have to read the rest of the books in the series cause I haven't yet and I need to, I know, but I am, obsessed with this book. I am. So I have to pick up the rest of them. Okay. Bully me to do it. Please do it. Please bully me to read the rest of these books. But Katon in here is this like spider creature and they've never like their, their kind does not kiss like at all. And so when Ivy teaches him how to kiss, it's a totally new game. Okay. It is. I love that part. These two are just soulmates. Soulmates. I, I so much. Next is Steph's Outcast by Ruby Dixon, which is book 14, 14 in the Ice Home series. Please do not read this as a standalone. Okay, please, please read the other books before you get to this one. But a lot of Ruby's books have the never been kissed trope before, and I love it because they're like men who have been waiting their entire life for their fated mate and their soulmate to kiss. And uh, some of them don't even know what kissing is before humans come anyway, because like, the Sakui tribe on like not Hoth have never heard of kissing before. Um, oh, the cat just opened the door. Hello, Savannah. <laughs> Let's shut that. Anyway, what I was saying was um, a lot of these uh, Sakui males or Sakui people in general have never heard of kissing before the humans come to their planet and um, they have to learn with the humans. And so this is the romance between Steph and Juth. And Juth is an outcast with the aliens. I don't want to say anything else really because it could be a spoiler for some of the books in the series. But anyway, this is a romance between Steph and Juth. Juth is an outcast alien and he's not really with the tribe and you figure out why when you read the book. Um, but that's what I'm gonna leave it at. Juth has never kissed anybody. He doesn't even know what kissing is because he is an outcast and hasn't been with the tribe at all or with humans at all. And he's also a single dad. So we have our first single dad on this planet and I actually loved that. And the last one that I love to mention is a monster romance. This is No Getting Ogre You by ML Eliza. So the heroine here, Jacqueline, I think she's hiking along the Appalachian Trail, um, but then she ends up like falling in a cavern and into the lair of an ogre. That ogre's name is Krug and he is totally obsessed with this human woman who has fallen into his like home. He is so grateful to finally have a companion in life and he wants to keep Jacqueline. But there's a language barrier between the two of them so it's very hard for them to communicate but they're both very interested in the other person. This is a very cute monster romance that's very hot as well so please read this one if you're into monster romance novellas. Krog and Hero has never been kissed before. I believe he's also an innocent hero, an innocent monster hero so I just love this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances where one of the characters in the couple has never been kissed before. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the kiss emoji in the comment section down below, either the emoji kiss or the lip kiss, whatever, whatever the case may be. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.